we've got to start thinking about ways in which we can get more people interested in, in our sport. Something is afoot in the sport of cross-country eventing. In an effort to attract more spectators and to improve how the sport is presented, David Holmes, the chief executive of British Eventing, is literally looking to the sky for inspiration. With, with a drone, you can actually follow the horse around and from different angles. And I think that would br brings a, a much, um, it can make the sport much more interesting and exciting. This is what I've been looking forward to, the whole regatta, the drone shot from the air. In July, the Henley Royal Regatta used drone cameras for the first time to provide previously unseen angles and views of the race. But it's not just sporting spectators that could benefit from having eyes in the sky. For me, the big uh, benefit for the riders is going to be as a training tool because that they will be able to then watch the, their cross-country uh, post-event and actually they learn a lot from how they rode the lines because it, you know, on the cross country it's very difficult for a coach to follow the rider around all of the fences because they, they generally have to be in a place where they can see as much as, as, as possible of the course. Dr Trevor Dobbins, a sports scientist, says drones could be particularly beneficial for competitors and coaches in sports that take place over longer distances where you've got events where you don't see a lot of the uh, performance by the individuals, now that you've got the capability to actually film that uh, from a long way off and whether that's relayed live uh, or whether that's seen afterwards can make a lot of difference to the, the human's performance. And so you get into concepts such as social facilitation where it's a bit like if nobody's watching somebody, you know, they might slacken off a bit, but if they know people are watching them and judging them, then you know, they're going to put a bit of extra effort in. Drones could also change the economics of live sporting events. So everybody realises, you know, what is the economics of sport and actually if the drones can help to enhance that, you know, potentially they get paid more. So um, it may well be that, you know, the, the entertainment camera drones are seen as having the same importance as the performance drones. But the use of drones at sporting events where there are large gatherings of spectators does raise safety concerns. I, I don't think anyone should ever rely on the safety features or trust that they would be able to protect members of the public. Drones, much like the ones that I fly and what almost all other commercial pilots have, will be built at their home or in an office. And the, the, there are so many different types and ways that things could go wrong that there's no set standard like you'd find in cars or aeroplanes or anything like that. The UK Civil Aviation Authority specifies that drones should not be flown over large open assemblies of more than 1,000 people. Within 150 metres of such an event or within 50 metres of any individual structure or vehicle that isn't under the drone operator's control. We absolutely have to be completely, uh, dare I say, bomb-proof in, in terms of knowing 100% there's no risk to the horses or to, to people at the event before we would, we would allow them to be, to be used. Some of the early work that has been done already shows that the horses, depending on where the drone is, obviously, uh, horses actually pay no attention to it whatsoever. And yeah, yeah, I, think, I think that's going to be the main concern for riders.